they stop, the stones will start. God's will will be done one way or the other. No one is. Be sober in the Lord. We, we need Him. He loves us, but we need Him. What happens if we miss? We perish. People are living, there are people who, you know, there are people on the streets of New York who have missed their purpose. Now, not only missing salvation, missing everything. And you see what happens. I was once giving out food in New York City to the homeless, and we, had, we were down, I don't know which terminal it was, but down in the depths, it was like way down, and there was this, this the home, homeless people, and we gave some food and the gospel, and this guy had his beard, and he, he started saying to us, he said, you're like apostles. He started saying, that, he started saying all these things, like you know the Lord. He started saying all these things that was kind of strange for a homeless person. And at that same time, I was wrestling with something. There was something that was not God's will for my life. And I kind of, I knew it, but it was less than, it was less than, it wasn't unholy, but it was less than best what he called me to. And I knew it, and I was wrestling with it, but I hadn't told anybody. This is years ago, when we had, and I, I'm, look, I'm ministering to this guy, and the guy suddenly looks at me, and he says, you, he says, you have to choose God's will. He said, you, you cannot turn away. You're, 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 you cannot even, he's saying in effect, you cannot even turn an inch away. You have to. You, you are right now in, in, in a precarious thing that you have to. I'm saying, what is this guy telling this to me? He said, you are not indispensable. You can fall. And I'm saying, what is this? The homeless? No one else knew what was going on. He said, I was a preacher. He said, I was a preacher. I used to preach all that. And then I, and I turned an inch. I turned, I turned away. And now look at me. He says, you don't think this is the, you don't know that this is the Lord. He's saying to me. He's saying, but remember Balaam's donkey. I'm like, wow. He says, he says, I may be a donkey, but this is the Lord. I said, whoa. Wow. You know, and I didn't tell anybody. I was just, oh, man, that never, I never, never left me. You can miss it. There are people who sit, who are not only in the streets, there are people who miss it sitting, spending their days in front of watching soap operas and watching things they shouldn't be watching and spending their days in bars, and spending all, even believers who spend their days wasting your purpose. How did Esther almost miss her calling, her purpose? One, she was living a double life, not being the person she was made to be. She was, a, she was attached to comfort, to possessions and riches and position. She didn't want to lose that. To privilege, that's how you can lose your calling. She was attached to, she didn't want to lose what she had. She didn't want to lose her life. She didn't want, well, that's another thing. She, didn't, she was getting, she was, at this point, you can tell, you know, she's, it's almost as if she's forgetting God. She's forgetting who she really is. She's forgetting the call that she has a life. As a Jew, she's called to praise and glorify God with all her life. She is getting even lost in this world. You know, this world of Persia, this Persian throne is full of carnality. How do you miss, how, do you, how can you miss the calling on your life? One, living a double life. Not being the person God made you to be. Trying to, pretending to be someone else or trying to be someone else. You're not to be someone else. You're not to even envy another believer. You know, we are to be examples for each other, but we are not, no one to say like, I, I, I want that where one's calling. No, you have your own calling. And also, when you pretend, you know, you hide your witness and you pretend because of people's affection, you're not going to fulfill your calling. Be yourself in the Lord. Be real, be true, be true to God. If you are attached to things and comfort and possessions and riches, you're how, all these things, you're afraid to give up anything, you will not fulfill your calling. If you have anything in front of God, you will not fulfill your calling. If you put it away, you will. If you are attached to the fear and the fear of man, that will keep you from fulfilling your calling. Fear of losing things. You know, you're going to live your whole life trying to keep things. You're not, how can you fulfill your calling? God's called you to be a blessing, not to be a hoarder. Getting lost in the world, getting lost in carnality will keep you. Forgetting who you are, forgetting God. Esther had hidden who she was. So she had hidden her observance of the covenant. She hid her relationship with God. 
She's getting lost. As attached to these things, yet God is still calling her. God, the grace of God is still calling her. He had not revoked his call. Even with her mistakes, he still calls her. The grace of God, you know, he sees throughout the Bible, Abraham messed up big time. He, he said that Sarah was his sister and had her part of a harem. A double life. And until he, he repented of that, he could not fulfill his calling. He messed up, but God did not revoke his calling. And then he goes into Hagar and they have a baby out of God's will. Caused a lot of problems and has caused a conflict to this day. But God did not revoke his calling. Moses lived as an Egyptian prince. He was a fugitive. He fled. He took, God, he took things into his own hand. He murdered someone and fled into the wilderness. But God meets him in the burning bush. God did not forsake his, his destiny. He'd rather redeem than throw away. David committed adultery, deception, and murder, and God judged him and, and had him go through punishment for the rest of his life. But, chastening, but he did not revoke his calling. God did not throw away David or reject his covenant with him. David repented, and so God used him. If David did not repent, would not be used. There was a price, but God used him. Simon Peter denied the Lord. The Lord could have thrown him away. It could have been, I said this before, Judas could have been the one. He, Judas could have repented and Simon Peter could have walked away. But he repented. God sought to restore him and use him. So you. We've sinned. We've messed up. All of us. Every one of us has messed up being human and being, in a, being the way we are. We think of all we did before we knew the Lord but we think even after knowing the Lord, we mess up. And even after that, we should know better. Some living a double life, some denying God, some just, just doing what you know is wrong. And he has every right to say, all right, enough. But his heart is to redeem. His heart is to redeem the calling. As with Esther, so with you.